could you not take them? I don't care what side of uh, the coin you're on for. If you think you're a sharp better, whatever you think, it, it, Central Florida, to me, is the pick. Moving on to Nebraska versus Northwestern. It's at like minus four, minus five. I, I took it even at minus six and a half. I really do not get this line move, okay? It went from plus nine, you know, Nebraska plus nine, all the way down to plus four in, in within an hour, right? I think, well, it stopped at six for a little bit and then went down to plus four. And it, it's, pre- it's pretty bad. I liked it even at minus six and a half. And I thought it was done and it was time to grab it, but it even went more. This is what happens when sharp syndicates, large uh, betting groups go on and bet. There's people that follow them and bet with them. But sometimes maybe they didn't, you know, figured the line was good at seven, but people are still jumping on that bandwagon and knocking out too long. That's what I think has happened. It's all the piggybackers to the sharp syndicates. Um, the Badgers are having a down year, and we know that. They were, it's not like super down. They lost to BYU. They Their defense doesn't look nearly as good. It's not ranked as good. And uh, they were favored by 18 to win uh, against Nebraska. So are you saying that Northwestern is 14 points worse than the Badgers? On a neutral field, I don't think so. You know, most of this was due, like I said, to the over correction and the line move, and people are looking at a letdown spot for Northwestern by beating uh, Michigan State. But it's it, it, it was too much. I think it was already factored into the line itself because I, I think nine was actually fine. As a matter of fact, if I look at my power rings right here, I have this line. An eight. I have I have this line an eight, and I still think that was a little bit low. Um, yeah, it, it, how much of a letdown is it when they beat Michigan State already the year before? You know, it, they're they're not going to let down this game. Um, I'm handy to cap in this game by looking at what Northwestern has done since that hiccup against Duke and Akron. They've gotten better. They beat Michigan State. Like we said, and they should have beat Michigan at home. They are number eight in total defense at 524 yards per game versus conference opponents in the conference, while Nebraska is worse than Illinois and Rutgers. Literally, how can you be worse than Rutgers in conference defense allowing 513 yards to conference opponents? That's terrible. Okay? Most of Nebraska's yards that you see here that people are using for calculations are done in garbage time. They are in garbage time. So it's very hard to quantify, right? So instead, I look for things that take out the garbage yards. I look to the the uh, efficiency indexes. Um, it looks at things like strength of schedule, net points per drive, possession success rates. Um, and with these FEI rankings, Northwestern is 27th in the nation. And Nebraska is 79th. That kind of tells you the story here. I'm taking North, North uh, Northwestern minus six and a half. Um, I might hit it again if it gets even lower, but I don't think it will. I think it's coming back. You can tell how money's coming in on uh, Northwestern to make up for you know the immediate line move that happened right away. Air Force versus San Diego State. San Diego State is laying. Ten and a half points. So this game is really all about the running game metrics to me. Okay. That's what this is all about. So you're looking at an Air Force team that, you know, they average 3.9 yards per run. A little low for a triple option team, I think. Um, They have a passer rating of 128 but they give up 3.3 yards per run, which is pretty good, right? And they do give up a lot of a lot to, against the pass. They have, right? 
One thing that Air Force has done now is that they've switched quarterbacks. They're making Donald Hammond the third their main guy because he's better than Isaiah Sanders. Well, he he is. <laughs> so um, they decided to make that change, and I like it. You know, because uh, I think that's going to give them a lot more opportunity um, to come in and uh, be a better triple option team. Hammond it averages about 3.3 yards per run. And Isaiah Sanders only averaged 2.47 with two TDs. So you could tell that uh, Hammond is better. And they made the right move there. So I like that. That's one thing I like about this game. Um, I also like the fact that the spread is so low. You know, you look at the spread, it's like, or the or the over-under so low, it's 43.5 now. If you look at an over-under of 43.5 and you look at the spread being over 10.5, that uh, kind of hits a rule right there. Whenever the spread is 20%, or more of the total, you usually take the dog. It's kind of a football metric that people use. You know, super low over under, yet over a 10. You know, this is going to be a lot of running, and there's not even going to be a t- lot of time to blow out these teams. You know, that's what people look at now. San Diego State's great against the run, 1.96, roughly two yards per game. But, uh, you know, their coach, you know, he's good against the triple option. He really is. Um, you know, I think that Rocky Long has played against it before, but they're in a letdown spot, a big one, from beating their rival, Boise State. Now, I know Air Force beat Navy, but I think them beating Boise State is bigger. Okay? Now, Air Force did beat San Diego State when they played at home last year by four points. Okay, so they know how to play this team. And I think this is going to go a lot like the Eastern Michigan versus San Diego State game. A lot of running, you know, a ton of running. If you look at how often they run the ball, well, I'll tell you right now. (laughs) I think it's more like uh, 326 rushing attempts for Air Force, 71 (laughs) passing attempts. You know, so you're looking at over... 75-80% 75-80% there. And for San Diego State, 221 rushing attempts to 104 passing attempts. So over twice as many rushing attempts than passing attempts. It's like 68% there. So, you know, San Diego State just runs the ball. You know, this is going to be a very low-scoring game. I can see it being like 20-17, to 17, you know, 23-20. to 20. Something like that. I'll take the 10.5 points happily with Air Force. Air Force plus 10.5. Houston versus East Carolina. The over-under was 67.5. Man, I love the way Houston plays offense this year. You know, I really do. Derek King is an athlete and they average 50 points per game and 7.5 yards per play. As a matter of fact, Houston is second in yards in all of NCAA. Now, what I like about this is that East Carolina, they play very fast. And what do we say about fast teams? Well, they can also lose fast. Now, um, 84 plays per game is top seven. Being at home, I like the fact that East Carolina should be able to put up some points against a shaky Houston defense that allows 5.5 yards per play and 30 points per game. So East Carolina at home averages 33 points per game. And so, you know, they should be able to score it and do that. Houston is also um, top 40 in plays per game. So, they don't. They they have a ton of yards per play, as you can see. You know, seven point five. So I think it's like second in the nation, but second or third there. Definitely second in total yards per game. But um, I see this score being around forty eight to thirty. Worst case scenario. 
Um, yeah, Texas Tech's at 589 yards. Houston's at 581. Central Florida, 574. Alabama, 567. And it goes so on from there. So, you know, Houston can definitely put up some points. Uh, uh, love the over, all right? 67 and a half's a little low here. I think Houston scores 48. Um, I see uh, Eastern... Uh, or sorry, East Carolina scoring 30 at the worst case. So 48 30, um, simple handicap right there. Texas A&M versus South Carolina. That's a premium pick. Louisville versus Boston College is a premium pick. Marshall versus Old Dominion is a premium pick. And Florida versus Vanderbilt is a premium pick. So I want to do some quick hitters here. Obviously, we got to talk about Wisconsin, my team, my Badgers versus uh, Michigan Wolverines. So, (laughs) um, Wisconsin uncharacteristically gives up six yards per play this year. Okay? Six yards per play. And that's ranked 89th in the nation. Not good. Okay, and their schedule was even all that bad. <laughs> they played um, some pretty easy teams. Iowa was their toughest, and you know they're very injured. You know they 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 lost Scott Nelson to a targeting penalty. Their uh, best or second best safety, Dakota Dixon, is their other one, um, and uh, they're really banged up. If you look at the injury report. We'll take a look at Wisconsin. They uh, hurts to look at this. Uh, D- Dakota Dixon's probable, but there's cornerback Caesar Williams is questionable. Uh, Darren Hill questionable. Griffin Grady, yeah, he doesn't matter. He's a linebacker, an old one, or like second, third string. He's questionable. And Scott Nelson's got that targeting suspension. You know they lost uh, Keldrick Preston a while ago left the team, you know, Wisconsin's a bit banged up there. Now, I think they got some rest last week and possibly might come back. Van Ginkle only played a little bit. But looking at this, you know, and and what they've been doing, they cannot get a pass rush, okay? They can't, you know, and that's the problem. They were so great at sacks before, and now they're not doing it, and that's the biggest issue that I have with Wisconsin. Their cornerbacks are actually, I think, better than people think, but they, in their secondary, their safety in their corners, and even their linebackers against the pass, but if they're sitting there for three, four, five, six seconds, they're trying to defend, it's, it's not going to, uh, you know, not, not going to help them out that much, you know. Yeah, Wisconsin is 118 out of 130 teams in sacks per game. And they used to be one or two type thing. You know, it, it, part, part of that was losing a bunch of DNs last year. Um, James and Sehe C- C- and, you know, there's just uh, losing some linebackers two years ago. It was TJ Watt, Beagle, you know, and uh, Van Ginkle this year has just been hurt, you know. Louder milk didn't play last game for some reason, another D end. So they have just not been uh, blitzing well and getting to the quarterback. And so I think that's a huge problem. Badgers missed Leon Jacobs too from last year. The guy was an absolute beast, quiet guy. So this is, you know, this is why this defense has just been so bad. They're, they're really young and green. Well, Michigan's has, you know, the best defense in yards per play. Um, but I, I've been hearing that Michigan has kept it vanilla until they played some of these main teams. I I don't know if I believe how true that is. It could just be an excuse, but maybe Michigan, Wisconsin did save something for this Michigan game, but they don't, they don't have their best receiver at Quintess Cephas anymore because of those charges. Um, good news is most of their offense besides, you know, their tight ends have been, uh, pretty healthy, 
Now, Ferguson has stepped up big in the tight end position. All their running backs are healthy, so that's good. So I, I do think Wisconsin should be able to put up some points here. But um, Michigan, you know, on the other hand, has been surprising some people. 